Hi there, I'm Alika Solomon. I'm a neuroscience graduate student here at the University of Michigan. As a graduate student, I have the incredible privilege of being able to work with a bunch of other researchers to understand what mouse brains are doing while they sleep so that they remember things when they're awake. Once we understand how brain processes work in mouse brains, scientists who study humans can then check whether the same processes are happening in the humans, and if so, they can try to help people to sleep better and to live better lives. In this video, I would like to share with you a little bit about how I study brains. Let's start with a question. True or false? Giraffes sleep for 30 minutes per day. What do you think? It turns out the answer is true. Giraffes spend about five minutes at a time sleeping, and when you add it all up throughout the day, it turns out to be just 30 minutes. That's as much time as it takes me to travel from my house to the lab. Now, 30 minutes of sleep per day for a giraffe might be enough. What about if you or I were to spend only 30 minutes sleeping one night? What would happen on the next day? I think you'd agree with me that we won't feel so good the next day. We wouldn't feel very well rested. We might have trouble thinking clearly. We might not remember things that recently happened or things that we recently learned. And I think we'd also feel pretty grumpy. We might snap at people that we normally wouldn't have if we had a good night's sleep. Now, these effects have been well studied in humans. It's easy to see it happen, but it's harder to see all of them in mice. One thing we do know is that similar to humans, Mice also have problems with their memory when they have too little sleep. Because both mice and humans have problems remembering things after they've had little sleep, we can study the process in detail in mice and then use that information to treat people and help them sleep better. So what exactly are mouse brains doing while they sleep that's helping them to remember things when they wake up? And how do you even study this? To study this in the lab, I find brain regions that I know are active during sleep, and then I use light to turn off those brain regions and check whether that has an effect on memory the next day. I know, it sounds a little bit like science fiction to use light to turn off a brain region, but what's really exciting to me is that that's actually a possibility in neuroscience. It's a technique called optogenetics. So what does this actually mean for me in the lab? How does this play out? I'll use this brain model to help me walk you through the process. So let us imagine that this is half of a mouse's brain. If the mouse were looking this way and you were looking into its brain, this is kind of like what you might see. Um, this is the outline of the half brain and down here is a region that I'm interested in studying. It's called the ventral tegmental area. Okay, so this region contains a whole bunch of brain cells in it, but we'll use this little object to represent it today. So what I want to do is send light to only this region and then use some fancy science tools to enable me to use that light to turn this region off. So how do I do that? In order to do that, I first have to do a surgery on the mouse. Yep, that's another really cool thing about being a neuroscience graduate student. I get to also be a mouse neurosurgeon. So what I do is I inject a virus into the brain region that, I, that I'm interested in. And this virus can, is acting like a male person and it's delivering a piece of DNA into the cells in this brain region. Once the cells have the DNA, the DNA tells them to make a certain, a special structure that's responsive to light. Once they make the structure, they wear it on their bodies, like a hat. We'll, we'll represent it here by like just coloring in the structure a little bit. All right, there. So, once our brain region 
is wearing the special structure. This means that whenever I put light onto the structure, it'll, I'll be able to turn it off because they have the special um, structure on them. So wait a second, I'm trying to put light inside a mouse's head while it's sleeping. How do you do that? How does the light get in? Because when I shine a light on my own head, it doesn't get into my brain. It just, it, the skull stops it. So what I need to do is insert a tube into the mouse's brain. So like this, I carefully insert the tube just above where I want to put light. And part of the tube sticks out of the mouse's brain so that I can ta attach it to some wires. And that's how I'll deliver light, like this. Woo! And whenever the light is on, it means that uh, the special structures that the, that the cells made is helping them to turn off. And so they can't do what they normally would. All right, so I know that's a lot. Let's look at some images to try to understand this a little better. What you're seeing is a section of the mouse's brain. In blue are a bunch of other brain cells elsewhere in the brain that we don't want to turn off. And in green is where I've injected my virus. Every blob of green that you see represents a cell that's able to make the special protein. And so when I shine my light in the brain, those cells would be turning off. Cool. So after surgery, the mouse recovers like a human would. And here's a little picture of what they look like at the end. The little black thing you see sticking out of their head is the wire through which I'm delivering the light. And they're able to freely move around their cage while they have the, um, the wires in. All right, so once the mice have recovered, I teach them about where they can find chocolate. So I, they learn that one location on a maze is where they can go and find pieces of chocolate. And they like chocolate, so they like to go there. And another part of the maze is where they can't find any chocolate and nothing exciting happens. It's kind of a boring part. So if they learn where the chocolate is on the next time they come into the maze, we expect that they would go to the chocolate side to search for more chocolate because it's a very exciting event when a mouse eats chocolate. Okay, so here's a picture of me sitting outside the behavior room where we're training the mice to learn about uh, where chocolate can be found. Uh, we have cameras in the room that help us to monitor the mice while we're sitting outside without disturbing them. So after the mice have learned the task, they go to sleep and I am able to turn on my light while they're sleeping and all the night my light's on but the brain region is not able to work and then when they wake up I turn off my light and the brain region resumes doing what it was going to do. So after turning the brain region off during sleep, the next day I put the mice back into the maze without any chocolate in it and I observe where they go. If the mice don't remember where the chocolate was found, it would mean that the region that I turned off the night before was actually important for remembering things the next day. Well, that would mean that I found a cool finding and I could share it with the rest of my neuroscience colleagues and we can pick a different question and go search the answer. So that's the kind of experiment that I do in the lab. I don't have all the results yet, and I'm still just starting out. Thank you for your attention. I hope you were able to learn a little bit about how I investigate what mouse brains are doing while they're sleeping in order to help the mice remember things when they're awake. If you want to build your own mouse brain, feel free to take a look at the document that I have in the description of the video. And if you have any questions at all about my research or about my journey through school, feel free to send me an email and I will happily reply. Thank you.